In today's lesson, we're going to talk about types of sets and set notation. Now, you've talked about number sets before, as in whole numbers, integers, and so on. And you can see the definition of a set is a collection of distinguishable objects. For example, the set of whole numbers, we use a variable w, is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3. And you can see that we separate the elements, or the objects in a set, by commas, and we use the curly brackets in order to hold the set. The universal set is a set of all the under elements under consideration for a particular context. Okay, So for example, a universal set for a set of digits, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. We're going to continue to look at some of these definitions as we move along and look at our first example. So if you can turn the page, we can see some notation here. It says the following is a summary of, no of notation introduced so far. So sets are defined using brackets, and we just talked about that. So there's the universal set. Um, to define a set A, we use 1, 2 in brackets there. And so we say that A is a subset of the universal set. It's a smaller portion of the set that was already introduced. And the symbol that we use for subset is this sideways U. Okay. All elements of A are also elements of U, so A is a subset of U, and that's the notation. When you see this little, looks like an apostrophe, it means the complement. So the set A prime, or A complement, the complement of A can be defined as, and you can see there, so A only lists 1 and 2, the complement would be 3. So that's the one that, that they didn't state. To define the set B as a subset of U that contains the number 4, well, they're showing you the two braces still, or the two brackets, but there's nothing inside. So that means it's an empty set. Okay? And you can also use this as an empty set. So B is a, com a subset of U but it's empty, there's nothing in there. And the more we move along, you'll get more and more comfortable with the notation. So let's take a look at the first example. It says, indicate the multiples of 5 and 10 from 1 to 500 using set notation. List any subsets. So if I want to define my universal set, right, I can define my universal set as u, equals, well they're saying from 1 to 500 would be all of the elements. So 1, 2, 3, and then indicate that we would go all the way to 499, 500. And it's understood that all of those values are in there. That's my universal set. Now we use other notation to indicate this means the exact same thing. I could have also written u is equal to, and then I would say from 1 less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 500, where all of the values belong to the natural numbers. So both of these mean the same thing. In general, we'll be using this one, but you should also be able to read this one. And the textbook that we will be using uses that, and when you look online, or you need to be able to distinguish between both of them and understand both of them. Okay, so I'm gonna write all of the number sets out in both methods, so just we can see that, but in general, we'll use the first part. So that's the universal set, that's all of the values. I'm gonna use the letter F, for our multiples of 5, and we usually have to define our variables so we know what we're talking about. So I'm letting you know that f would be our multiples of 5, so that would be values starting at 5, 10, 15, and so on, 495, 500. 
right? So going up by fives, those would be all my multiples of five. So how would I write that in the other notation? Choose a variable, in this case I'm going to use a lowercase f, where f is equal to five times x, because up here we defined x as all of our values. So if you take five times, right, all of those values, but the values would only be from 1 to 100. So if you go past 100, then you get over the maximum value that they want us to reach. Because 5 times 100 is 500, so that's the end of that. Where all of our values are still natural numbers. Oops. Okay, so that would be the other way of writing that. And then the last variable I'm going to introduce is t for our multiples of 10. So that would be 10, 20, 30, and so on, 490, 500. And you can see some of the patterns here now. So how would I define that? If I could do a lowercase t, where t is equal to 10x. And now the numbers that we're multiplying 10 by in order to reach that 500 would be any values from 1 to 50. And they'd still all be natural numbers. Okay? So that's just defining our universal set and the two subsets of the universal set. So what do I mean by subset? Well, F is a subset of S. Sorry, not S. U. The universal set. Right? F is a subset because all the multiples of 5 are also part of all of the original numbers. And T is also a subset of U. And if you look really carefully, you'll notice that T is also a subset of F. So if you wanted, you can write out that T is a subset of F, which is also a subset of U. Okay? So that's using the set notation, and you can also use a Venn diagram. And I really like using Venn diagrams. It's visual. It's sometimes easier, often easier to see what's going on with our sets. So if you look, one of the notation things that we need to be mindful of is whenever you're drawing a Venn diagram, you need a box around it. So I always start by drawing the box. Sometimes on tests, I'll give you the box, but on the provincial exam, they're really finicky about having that box. It's part of a notation, part of what we need to do to write a proper Venn diagram. So I'm going to use U for the universal set. So visually, that's everything that's going on here. And then I'm going to have a circle here for all my multiples of 5. And then my subset of that are all my multiples of 10. Now notice there's multiples of 5, multiples of 10, but that's not everything, right? There's values here in our universal set that aren't multiples of 5 and not and aren't multiples of 10. And the way that we, instead of listing all of them, we write that all of those values would be the complement of f. So those are all the leftovers, right? Anything that's not in f and that's left over. So if you want to write that down, f complement for all the non-multiples of 5.
And if they're not multiples of 5, then they're not multiples of 10. You know, if you want, you can write that. But by default, they're not multiples of 10 either. Okay? Let's take a look at the next example. Here in example 2, it says a triangular number such as 1, 3, 6, or 10 can be represented as a triangular array. Now if you look at the pattern here, you can see um, it says determine a pattern that you can use to determine any triangular number. So on the first one I can see that there's just 1. For 3, that's made up of 1 and 2. For 6, that's 1, 2, and 3 and so on. You can see this pattern emerging. So how do we get these? Well we add them, right? So for the first one, for the second one, we get oops, 1 plus 2. For the next one, 1 plus 2 plus 3. So it's the sum of those numbers. So we can see 10, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. So once you can develop a pattern, you can see that the nth triangular number would be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus, and it would keep going till the nth number. Right? However many there are. So it's the sum of the first n consecutive natural numbers. Now for b, they're asking us to determine how many natural numbers from 1 to 100 are even, odd, and triangular. Now recognize that they're asking us a different question. How many? So let's count them. So first of all, what is our universal set? Okay, well our universal set is all the values from 1 to 100. Nine, one hundred. So how many values are in the universal set? There are one hundred. And look at the notation I'm using. So u is for the universal set. When I put a lowercase n in front of that, that means the number of elements in the universal set. Okay, so they want to know how many are even, how many are odd, and how many are not triangular. So first of all, how many are triangular? Well, we can start seeing we've got 1, 3, 6, 10. Let's continue going. I'm going to define T as the triangular numbers. So we've got 1, 3, 6, 10. Well, that would be adding 4, so add one more. That would be add 5, so that would give us 15. Add 6, 21, and so on. So you can keep going with that pattern. Fifty-five, sixty-six, and then you can't add any more or you're going to go past the 100 maximum, right? So there you go. The next one would be 105. So these are your, our triangular numbers. How many numbers are triangular? Count them up. And you should get 13 values there. Okay? So that's just, they haven't even asked about that, but that's how I'm starting. And now we can look at them, visually count the even ones, visually count the odd ones, and then how many are not triangular. That would be the complement, right? So if we look at the first one, even, well, the even set, that, oops, 6, 10, 28, 36, 66, 78. So 
so count those up and you can see that there are six even ones and there's two ways of doing this last part you can even look at the t either look at the total and subtract them or count the odd ones as well and the odd ones we've got one three 15, 21, 45, 55, and 91. And the number of those would be 7. And that makes sense because the total of even plus the total of odd should give you all of the triangular numbers. Great. Turn the page here. We can look at this a different way, like I was saying. If you wanted to look at how many, oh, not a different way. This is the third one. We already did even odd. And the third one was how many are not triangular. So that would be the complement. So those would be 2, 4, 5, 7, and so on. And you can write them all out, right? Those are the ones that are not triangular that bigger for you. Or you can figure out how many there are. So the number of not triangular numbers would be the number in our universal set, which would be all of them, 100, subtract the number that are triangular. So we had 100 in the universal set, we had 13 triangular, so the difference there would be 87. So the complement would be 87 non-triangular numbers. That's what that means. Just a note on communication here. Communication notation, the phrase from 1 to 5 means from 1 to 5 inclusive. In set notation, the number of elements is the set x. It's written as n of x, so we were talking about that. So counting the elements as opposed to listing the elements. Okay. And the last example, or the last question in this example says, how many numbers are triangular? Well, you can continue adding and adding and adding to the last number. So there are an infinite number of natural numbers. So there's an infinite number of triangular numbers. So we use a special name when there's an infinite number. This is called an infinite set. So now that we've done those first two examples, you should have the tools you need to do example three and example four. So try those out on your own and then we'll go over them in class. Thanks for joining me today.